Thanks for tuning in to more Fantasy Football Talk Dynasty style on OFN Dynasty with Rotowire.com. That means John McKechnie is with me once again. How you doing, John? I'm great. We are about 24 hours from the season yeah. getting underway. I, I cannot wait. Um, we, we've got college football already rolling. Uh, NFL is finally here. Football in full swing. Uh, we've been waiting you know, a long time for, for, for this to get back. So I, I couldn't be more excited. Yeah. How's the uh, college football week one? Uh, because again, as we mentioned next year, I'll venture into fantasy college football because I have more than enough time to learn how to, uh, play, uh, college fantasy football. One thing at one, one learning situation at a time. Dynasty is my learning project mm-hmm. this year. Uh, sure, next year sure. it'll be college football. So how'd that go in week one? Uh, pretty good. I uh, uh, hung a pretty big score in the in the Rotowire staff league. Um, How did you do that? About it, Tell me some of the players that? you had. Who were the players that gave you the big score? Uh, let's see here. Um, I had uh, Devontae Price, uh, the running back from Florida International. They had a, a total cupcake matchup against Long Island, which I did not know fielded a football team, <laughs> yeah. but they, they, they do. And uh, he went ahead and scored or he had five carries for 165 yards and uh three touchdowns okay. so he was he, he really not got bad. after it yeah that not now too shabby. is, is, that, is that is that a weekly thing where you have to manipulate your rosters differently every week um yes so okay. i mean uh the, yeah it runs just kind of like a standard uh fantasy football league it's just you know you're, you're using college players um so uh so that the roster that i had Featured Price as my third running back. We go pretty deep in that one just because the the player pool is so large. So you're starting three quarterbacks, you're starting three running backs, uh, and you're starting a couple of flexes um, and five wide receivers as well. Uh, Corey Rucker of Arkansas State had 31 points. Tank Bigsby, the running back for Auburn, had a nice game, uh, 25 points. Uh, Bailey Zapp, the new quarterback at Western Kentucky, seven passing touchdowns as well. So. Uh, a lot of production from a lot of different spots. All right, awesome. Can't wait to do that next year. All right, sounds good. And the sports betting uh, section also that you manage must be uh, rocking and rolling too. Yep, so we, we've got uh, a handful of weekly uh, college football betting articles. The Capper, that's with Greg Vera and with Chris Bennett. That runs every Thursday. And Jeff Edgerton is also writing um, a weekly uh, college football betting article. Both of those off to good starts a- as well. And then NFL, we've got a handful of betting articles. Of course, Chris Liss is uh, beating the book is, is one of the big ones that, that's on the website. Uh, I believe that's already out. Uh, for week one here. So a uh, ton of sports betting content to get to as well when it comes to the football side of things. Yeah, I can't wait. Already got a little taste last week and I just finished uh, recording a handicapping show with Mark Lawrence from playbooksports.com. So we talked all about the big games in college football this week, gave our picks, trends and all that kind of stuff. And by the way, we do have actually there was an offer that we had that I'll be posting up in the editing uh, before after the show uh, for Mark's package. He actually has uh, a year a yearly package for his newsletter. It's like ten dollars a week for the newsletter, but if you buy it for the year, it's ninety nine dollars for the newsletter. Use the uh, the uh, bonus code Prime, uh, then you get ten dollars off, and that's more than twenty issues all the way through the Super Bowl. So it's a great deal for anybody out there that. Uh, wants to a uh, handy wants to know exactly uh, how to best uh, handicap their college football games from an expert. And how are you guys on your site? How does that differ from you know people like Mark that have been handicapping games for years and they have a, that's all they do It's just the handicapping and the trends. What are you guys specifically doing on your website when people go to that section of the website for the sports betting? Why are they going there? Um, so it, it's kind of a one-stop shop. Uh, it's a really great place to comparison shop for, for your lines, whatever. Uh, like, say, for this weekend, you wanted to get uh, the best number for Iowa. We have feeds from, you know, PointsBet, BetMGM, FanDuel Sportsbook, DraftKings Sportsbook, all available easily um, in that in that one page. If you could just go to rotowire.com slash C foot slash betting slash college football, you scroll down and you see all the odds. You can search and you can comparison shop to find the, the best lines. But then on top of it, like I mentioned, 
We have content as well. We have the latest futures odds that, that are getting constantly refreshed. Obviously, things are different after week one. Sure. Bryce Young, now the leader in the clubhouse for the Heisman. That was not the case as of a week ago. So we have all the latest stuff uh, ready to roll for you and, and where to find uh, the best uh, lines. All right. Sounds great. Can't wait to dive into that and much more. But this show is about Dynasty Fantasy Football. And uh, let's get right to it. So, uh, first of all, as far as uh, the latest news is player movement, uh, Le'Veon Bell is a big is a big name because we were all wondering what Baltimore was going to do. And Baltimore has their number one guy go down, J.K. Dobbins. But, you know, 1A, 1B, Gus Edwards, and I believe Jan has uh, Gus Edwards in our league, Jan Levine. So he's all psyched up and everything. Uh, I still think he should be psyched, or anybody that has Gus should be psyched that he's going to get more carries, more production. But now Le'Veon Bell is there. And if, you know, dynasty football is a little different, you know, Le'Veon Bell is on the backside of his career. Is this something where... Does it make a difference to the to the owner who owns Gus Edwards in a dynasty league compared to an owner who doesn't that would be interested in Le'Veon Bell? Yeah, Bell, I think, is is more on the on the redraft radar. I think he there is a case to be made for him in Dynasty. And and as you mentioned, you know, he's someone who's definitely trending up. If you look at the data over on Sleeper, he's been added. Um, in a ton of spots. He's the number one most added player, um, I believe, over the last 24 hours or so. And it makes sense to a degree in, in that Baltimore, obviously, they lean on the run game a fair amount more than pretty much any other team in the NFL by a pretty significant margin. Um, and Bell, of course, has that pass-catching acumen that Gus Edwards hasn't shown to have yet. And, and Tyson Williams, it's kind of a mystery whether that's um, a facet of his game. But I just think that at the same time, like while there is that case for Le'Veon Bell, he, well, first of all, pass catching isn't a huge part of what they, the Ravens ask their running backs yeah. to do. Um, I, I think you can also look at it, read the tea leaves in that Le'Veon Bell was signed to the practice squad. Uh, Trenton Cannon was signed to the 53 man roster. I think that that is pretty telling as far as how Baltimore views these guys, prioritizes these guys. And and yeah, I just don't I just don't think that um, Le'Veon Bell at this stage of his career has a ton left to give. So I, I understand if you're a little bit desperate to just like fill out a, a roster spot or, ha you know, have someone for, for down the road, that kind of thing. But I don't know if many competing teams this year in dynasty leagues or redraft leagues um, will be uh, starting Le'Veon Bell at any point. And, and that's why you like Tyson Williams over Le'Veon Bell because you actually picked up Tyson Williams this week as one of your two pickups off the waiver wire. So you had the choice and you went with Tyson Williams. I did. Um, I just feel like um, there, there's the greater chance for immediate returns when it comes to him. Um, I, I'm the person that does have J.K. Dobbins, so that, that was a big um, hit to my roster. Um, but Williams, he seems like he's earned that number two job. I think the Ravens will let him go with it for at least the first few weeks of the season. So there is a chance that, um, you know, I'm not I'm not quite gutsy enough to, to roll him out week one, but I'm very interested to see how he does these first couple of weeks and how his role shapes up with, with Gus Edwards and, and, you know, what, what Gus Edwards can do and what he can't do and, and whether uh, Williams is able to be a compliment in that regard. Yeah, actually you made two moves this week. The other move that you made, cause you had Cam Newton. We talked about that last week. Yes. And uh, so you drop Cam and you picked up Jimmy G instead, which I don't think is a bad move. I mean, I think Jimmy G, I was even, I just did my, my, uh, redraft draft last week and nobody picked him in that league either. And I'm like, I, I know, all right, maybe Trey Lance is going to play. Maybe he will, but maybe he won't. And maybe Jimmy Garoppolo will be the quarterback all year. Uh, I, I think he gets too bad of a rap. I'm not saying that he's going to be a starter, but I think he's a very adequate guy that you sit on your bench, uh, even in dynasties. And uh, if you need to spot start him, or if you if one of your guys gets hurt and Jimmy G's by midseason a healthy quarterback and looking like the Jimmy G from a couple of years ago, then it's a it's an easy pickup. Right, right, exactly. So I, th I think you have it framed correctly. I mean, this is a ten team league where you're starting 
two quarterbacks. So quarterback is obviously thin on the waiver wire. So uh, with Cam Newton being released by New England, I knew that uh, churning over my third quarterback spot was a priority when it came to that this first uh, set of waivers running. So uh, it was between Garoppolo and Bridgewater. I, I kind of w- coin flipped between the two of them. Um, I, I think that Garoppolo is in a good situation. I don't think that he will hold on to the starting job all year, but I, th- I think at the very least, I know that I have a NFL starter for at least the first little bit of the season on my bench if I need him. Yeah, let's see. Taking a look at our quarterbacks here, the only other veteran it looks like that's available besides Bridgewater's Dalton. So the, yep. the, the so pickings pretty are pretty slim pickings. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Bridgewater's going to be very interesting. Because uh, clearly you look at that Denver offense and you're like, wow, you have KJ Hadler, who's in my mind, the third best receiver on the team. Then you've got Judy, who we both like a lot. And you've got Sutton coming back from the injury and he's a top two receiver. And you had Tim Patrick with all this responsibilities last year. That's still on the team. So uh, there's a and then you got fan at tight end and you got Albert O and you've got the running back rook the rookie from North Carolina. There's a lot of offensive weapons for Teddy Bridgewater and this is about the quarterback position for the Broncos now. The offensive line's got to protect them, but if they if if they do their job, then Teddy Bridgewater, man, he's got no excuses. That's a good point. Um, yeah, it will be up to Teddy in the, in that sense. Um. Yeah, I mean, he's completely surrounded by by talent. I think that there's a big reason why people were kind of kicking around the idea of, of throwing some money on the Broncos as a Super Bowl uh, sleeper earlier on, uh, you know, especially when the Aaron Rodgers rumors were, were really <laughs> heating up. But but um, even still, I mean, there's a lot of talent yes. on this team. Um, so Bridgewater, if he can just play like replacement level quarterback for them, then they're in a really good spot. Yeah, I, look, with, with him as one of only two quarterbacks left on on uh, on the waiver wire, uh, veteran guys, I'm surprised. I, I think, and again, I get it, we're dynasty, but still, I think he could put up big numbers this year if he plays well and stays healthy. So uh, he's somebody that I, I might actually consider at some point here, uh, depending on what I wind up doing, because I, I just made one move so far myself because I had um, Hollister, my last pick of the draft, I believe, uh, cut by the Bills. So I decided to pick up Ty Johnson of the Jets. And again, being a Jet fan, it's easy for me to know a a little bit more about what's going on with the team. And I'm a Ty Johnson fan because I I was surprised when he got cut by Detroit. And the reason is because he's young. He's very fast. He was a big playmaker in college. And Detroit's Detroit. Uh, I, I I slammed them for cutting Ty Johnson and keeping Adrian Peterson. I just, what are you doing? You're not trying to win a Super Bowl. So right. Jets take him. And I figure, all right, maybe there's something wrong with him. And he actually played pretty well for the Jets last year in spot duty. And I figured, okay, you know, whatever. We'll see what the next regime thinks. And he's been getting a ton of reps in the preseason or got a ton of reps in the preseason and looked really good doing it. So I think there's a possibility. I know it's a crowded room. But again, this is dynasty. I'm looking at if he winds up winning the job by midseason or by the end of the season, then maybe he's a starting running back for the team next year. I think he's got the talent. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, he was someone that uh, the people that were a little bit over investing in, in Michael Carter, um, yes. they were they were just kind of trying to hope that Ty Johnson wouldn't factor into the mix. And, and just the opposite has happened. He's really played himself in, into a role um, where he's obviously way onto the onto the radar. Um, someone that is uh, trending in the right direction when it when it comes to uh, his value. So um, I like that move a lot. And I, I think that he's someone that I grabbed a lot in the last round of just re- uh, regular redraft oh, leagues okay. as well, just because I think that New York's. Uh, running back rotation is kind of anyone's guess. And I think that Johnson yes. has as good of a case as anyone to to take that role. Yeah. The only other player that I was considering uh, dropping, and I'm going to wait a week or two to see how the, 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 the roles are uh, with the chargers. Cause I have uh, Kelly and I, uh, Kelly uh, didn't do much last year, even though he had a chance, but uh, Jackson's the backup as well. So I want to see how things shake for a couple of weeks. If it looks like it's going to be a repeat of last year, then he's the obvious guy that I'm going to drop and try to pick somebody else up. But 
Uh, other than that, it's just way too early. Uh, I'm happy with pretty much everybody else. And sure. uh, taking a look at some of the other uh, news that has come out over the last uh, few days or the players that are trending is what happened with Latavius Murray uh, with the Saints. So now he's an older player. So uh, if we take a look at it, uh, Ryan Dunleavy has Latavius Murray. Uh, so I'll find, you know, he hasn't at this point dropped Latavius Murray. He still has him. I'm sure if you have Latavius Murray, are you, should you be patient and just wait to see, does he get picked up somewhere pretty quick? Cause I would think he would. And where does he go? Um, I think that uh, it would be shrewd to just hang on to him for this first week or two. I think that it's too early to to say that a market uh, is coming off a really you know solid season, running for four and a half yards or carry, uh, four touchdowns in there. Um, just looked like a a guy that can still be a contributor on a good team. I think a lot of people lunged at the idea that that the Ravens might go after Murray, but I think that their roster moves over the last twenty four hours point in a different direction. So. Um, that does kind of change the the direction in which Murray could or uh, the the rosters where uh, Murray could be a fit, but I, I think that there will be a landing spot somewhere out there. Um, Arizona doesn't have a particularly impressive backfield. I would want, I wonder if he fits their style or not. You know, Miami has just a bunch of, a bunch of just a guy type of players. Um, I, I, uh, the Jags have, have made some moves. They acquired Duke Johnson, so they're looking for obviously someone a little bit different. But um, I do believe that Murray will uh, have a market form for him. So if you had him, obviously the value is, is down right now. And at, at that point, you're you're only hurting yourself further. You're locking in the loss for sure if you cut him. Yeah. Whereas if you wait a little bit, uh, there's a possibility you land, you land somewhere in services and you know has some sort of serviceable value. Maybe Minnesota. Maybe he goes back to the Vikings. Because look, I was, I would have considered myself uh, if if I had Dalvin Cook, looking at a backup, which I I actually picked. I had the third pick in my redraft league, and so I took Dalvin Cook. I had him last year, but I really didn't care about taking Madison. And I'll look at that sometimes. But I'm not going to force the issue and take a number two running back just because I have the number one running back. Because I've seen Madison when he started, and I just think he's okay. I don't think he's anything that would be, you know, oh, just because Madison's starting now for a couple of weeks, he's going to easily get 100 yards and a touchdown. I don't know that. But Latavius Murray, if he gets picked up by Minnesota, that's a different story. That's something that I would actually if, – if, if Latavius Murray was – available and I had Dalvin Cook, I would definitely consider Latavis Murray. Sure, sure. I think you have that lined up right. Okay. Uh, that means Tony Jones. Latavis Murray trends way down. Tony Jones trends way up for the Saints. Uh, what do you think about Tony Jones? Because I haven't really, I mean, I don't know much about whether Tony Jones is going to be a competent NFL back, but, you know, he's a, a serious injury away from uh, getting a lot of a lot of carries for the Saints. No, sure. Absolutely. So Tony Jones, I mean, he, he's got like an interesting, you know, size fr- frame where, you know, he's, he's 5'11", 224. That's a That's a guy that can move a pile. Uh, no questions asked. And, it, you know, he had he showed some speed during his time at Notre Dame, but didn't really show it at, at the combine. So maybe he's just kind of one of those guys that's a little bit better when, when the pads come on. That type of thing. So n- not a great athlete, but but serviceable nonetheless. Um, it's those Notre Dame skill position players that always bother me when they get to the NFL. They never, you know, Josh Adams was really good for Notre Dame, and he's just okay. You know, even the receivers, you know, Boykin, Boykin looked like yeah. he was going to be, oh, wow, look at his size, and he hasn't really done much. You know, so. No, no. So yeah, so, yeah, they, they've got a bit of a, a spotty track record there for sure. But, yeah. I mean, Jones, I mean – so I think you need to detach a little bit from the prospect eval when it comes to him and just look at the reality that he's the number two running back in New Orleans. I think that we might see Alvin Kamara's heaviest workload. Um, th- this might even you know tick up Kamara's projection for this year because Tony Jones isn't as good as Latavius Murray. I, I'm, I'm willing to go out on that limb. So we, we might be and we're running into a Saints offense that's going to look just inherently different this year with Jameis back there as opposed to Drew Brees. So maybe uh, 
Kamara gets leaned on a little bit more, especially in the run game. But either way, I think Jones is interesting enough. He's a he's a new name. Uh, he's someone that that has that that uh, size to to maybe push the pile down near the goal line. So um, I totally I totally understand why he became someone that that uh, ranks number two on the on the most trending up players over on Sleeper according to their data. Uh, he's almost 80% rostered across all uh, sleeper leagues right now. So I think that he's like that worthwhile gamble. I think it, the question comes down oftentimes to like him or Tyson Williams. We'll see how that one shakes out. I, I'm willing to to put my lot behind Tyson Williams for now, but I, I could see that, that going wrong and I could see Jones um, ending up being the better of the two. So it's totally speculative, but I, I would prefer Williams between the two, but I see the case for Jones. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because I, both of them are just one step away. Uh, sure. But I don't know. I get I, I think I, I honestly think that Williams will probably get more carries as uh, because I just again, I just don't think Baltimore is going to put Gus Edwards out there and ask him to rush the ball 25, 30 times a game. I just don't see it. I just don't think that's their makeup. I think the guy's on the roster. He's the number two. Then go out and do your job. I think that's what they're going to ask him to do. And Ryan Dunleavy has Alvin Kamara. He has Latavius Murray. We just said he's we're hold he's holding on to him, but Tony Jones is available. So he drafted Latavius Murray. So I'm assuming he he took Latavius Murray as some sort of insurance. He's got the, the number one Kamara. So I'm kind of surprised that at least as of yet. He hasn't gone after Tony Jones. Yeah, no, that that would definitely make sense, especially if he feels like there's an expendable roster spot, or if he, you know, shifts someone over to IR to open up a spot. Um, that that Jones would would make his way onto the roster. Would not be surprised by that. That would be that would that'd be a move that makes a lot of sense. And there are some def- uh, uh, team defenses, and we don't uh, we we don't have that in our dynasty leagues. But on leagues that do have uh, uh, team defenses, um, it's interesting that Carolina is actually the third most trending uh, pick uh, outside Bell and Jones and obviously the top defense. And I, I guess that's just all because they're playing the Jets and a rookie quarterback. Yes, I think that, that that pretty much sums that one up. And, and you know, si- similar deal for the Jags being, um, you know, the number six most trending entity um, over there on, on Sleeper. And that has everything to do with them playing against Houston. So if you're into the... Matchups into the streaming defenses <laughs> game that those two make the most sense. Yeah, uh, and uh, some some of the other players that are trending down besides Latavius Murray that are in our league, uh, Chuba Hubbard's trending down a little bit. Uh, uh, Deshaun Watson, and that's just going to keep trending down the more days and the week or two that goes by. I wonder when everybody's going to start giving up on that. But look, when you're in a dynasty league, Ryan's got Deshaun Watson. I guess you just hold on to him. You don't you don't worry about this year. You say, okay, I, I picked him up for a reason. Sooner or later, he's gonna be on an NFL team. And if I have to wait till 2022, that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, I, I think that that makes sense. Um, yeah, at this point, yeah, you're you're not expecting 2021 contributions from him. Like he he was taken, he was valued in, in such a way where this year might be a wash, but you're you're investing in, in those future years when it comes to Watson. Now you have David Johnson. And he's trending down. Uh, why is that? Why is he trending down? Has uh, Philip Lindsay or Mark Ingram, uh, has the official depth chart come out? And are they definitely going to wind up getting more carries? Because I thought Johnson was the number one running back. Right. I, I, th- I think he still is. But I think there's just the, the problem that Houston is so poorly run that they're going to be carrying – I think upwards of five running backs on their active roster for, for week one. Okay. Um, you know, I'm sure that one, at least one of them will be a scratch, but yeah, I mean, they, they have Ingram, Lindsay, Scotty Phillips and Rex Burkhead there. And I, I expect only Scotty Phillips to be like a game day and active. So um, things could be kind of just, uh, just so crowded there and, and such like a mess as far as that rotation goes that people uh, were willing to, press the eject button on David Johnson. So I understand it to an extent. I mean, the, the, I think the only reason to go after David Johnson this offseason was under the guise that he would be that number one guy in Houston. If that's not the case, then you're buying 
not great volume of a player who's not giving you great efficiency. Um, and that's obviously not really a, a recipe for a whole lot of success. Okay. Now uh, let's wrap up uh, with uh, our own personal roster decisions here uh, for this week. And uh, I don't really have any, let's see, just taking a quick look. Yeah. The only decision that I have to make that I have yet to decide on at this point uh is whether or not to start Sony Michelle. Remember we talked about this that and and I probably not, but we talked about this is that I was happy obviously that Michelle got traded sooner than I thought to a team that's going to use him almost like a number 1. And and if Daryl Henderson doesn't pick things up, then I don't think any doubt Michelle's going to carry the ball an awful lot. He's going to get a lot of touches this year. But I I need to see it first. I got to see what the plan is. And they are playing a pretty good defensive team in the Bears. So based on the fact that I'm very comfortable with everybody else that's starting, I'm probably going to go go about just leaving him on the bench. And look, Jones, Montgomery, McCaffrey, and Henry are not going anywhere at running back. And then my receivers, the the only guy I guess that I would consider would be Edwards for the Raiders because it's only a I'm, I'm I'm using this as a you know a prognosis of okay this is what I expect to see from Brian Edwards even though it hasn't happened yet that would have been right. the only that could still be the only thing that I could decide of maybe I'll go Michelle and and put Edwards there but uh right now I'm kind of leaning towards Michelle on Michelle on the bench for one week but I haven't made my mind up what do you think yeah I, th- I think uh, you have the the running back room sorted out. I mean, you uh, you know, like we talked about, you constructed a very strong uh, running back room with McCaffrey, Henry, with Aaron Jones, um, and David Montgomery as your fourth. I mean, that that's uh, that's tough to beat. So, uh, Michelle, I think if from where you're sitting, you just kind of hope that from your bench, he's able to to you know catch some eyes, maybe do something this week to where he can be a trade bait type of guy that, that, um, you know, maybe if you want to, if you were looking to bolster your receiver room, yeah. something like that, um, that Michelle kind of pays off that way, because I, I don't see him barring injury, um, forcing his way into, into being someone that you start over any of those uh, four, four players. Yeah. yeah. That's the, that's the deal. Cause uh, the way it's set right now, there is no room for him. Um, and if I, if I did consider again, the only thing, uh, the only other player that I would consider if I moved Brian Edwards down uh, would be Donovan Peoples Jones. But once again, I have to see Donovan Peoples Jones do this in the regular season, uh, not just the preseason. So I'm pretty set where I'm at. Uh, what about your uh, situation so far uh, as we take a look at your roster, or at least you and I take a look at the roster. And by the way, starting next week, when we have interviews, we have interviews, great, but when we don't, we'll also have the board available for everybody to see what we're seeing. So uh, what is your uh, what are your tough decisions if you have them at all this week? Um, so quarterback is a little bit interesting. I, I have Lamar Jackson, so of course I'm starting him. But uh, between Baker Mayfield going on the road to the Chiefs versus the recently acquired Jimmy Garoppolo going up against Detroit, um, that that is leaving me with, with an interesting decision there. And then, of course, um, with David Johnson, with the nature of what's going on with that Houston backfield, um, I'm starting to feel more and more certain that I'm going to have to turn to one of either Tyson Williams or Trey Sermon in in place of David Johnson. I am worried about David Johnson, and and uh, you know that seeing that seeing the trends kind of helps affirm that a little bit. So we'll, we'll see what I end up doing with the, with that number two uh, running back spot. So either. Number two, running back or number two, quarterback are, are the two things that are uh, going to be my big central focus as far as roster decisions go for week one. Now, what's interesting is I know you took a flyer on the receiver from the Chargers late in our draft, Correct. and then Correct. he actually wound up getting what, what was it? Was it a straight waiver? What happened there with Johnson and then the Jags getting him? Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he got waived by, by the Chargers, uh, Tyron Johnson, and and got scooped uh, the next day uh, by the Jaguars. I think he, he was their top waiver priority. Um, so so they went ahead and got him. I think it's too early to expect uh, him to have a role in that offense. 
Um, I still expect that top three to be, you know, that mixture of, of DJ Chark and LaVisca Chenault and Marvin Jones. But I am interested to see what, what Urban um, does with, with Tyron Johnson because he's got that downfield ability that, that maybe no one else in that in that receiver room truly does. And that, that could be, you know, an added facet for, for Trevor Lawrence potentially. All right. Uh, and as far as injuries, uh, no, you don't have anybody. Let's see. Yep. Uh, A.J. Brown is the only starter right now that has an injury designation. How's he looking? Um, I believe they just rested him today. It, it does. I am concerned with how much his knee has been kind of like the centerpiece of any time that he gets discussed uh, during the training camp and late into the off season. But I think when it's time to lace him up and it's time to go, AJ Brown's going to be out there and I think he's going to be an absolute stud. So um, at least I'm telling myself that I have, <laughs> I have a lot of, a lot of AJ Brown in a lot of different spots. So hoping that ends up being the case, but I, I am confident that uh, he'll be good to go Sunday and he'll look like AJ Brown. And uh, I have, a t- I have a Tyler Lockett uh, that is questionable on my starting lineup. Uh, I haven't heard anything in a really negative uh, so, uh, I don't have anything to worry about. Do I, uh, I don't believe so. No, I, I think, uh, I think he'll be ready to rock, uh, once the season get, gets underway on Sunday for Lockett. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Actually I was a, I picked up, uh, in my, uh, redraft league, I picked up for the second straight year. I picked up DK Metcalf. So now I got Metcalf in one league and Lockett in the other. So at least now, if one of the guys steals all the all, all the all the catches, because Seattle's very prone to doing that. Because I, I had Russell Wilson last year and DK Metcalf, and I knew what was going on there. And it was like it's like week to week, you didn't know who was getting the ball. Like one week, Lockett would be getting like. Wilson would throw the ball to him like eighteen times, and DK would be like a you know a two a two catch. Uh, kind of disguise uh, receiver for the week. Uh, so that, that drives you crazy when you're a fantasy owner, but at least I have them both uh, in case that ever happens to me. Uh, a little bit different for you, though, because you're you're in about, what, 30 leagues? Yeah, gosh. Uh, well, <laughs> well, luckily, there's not there's not a ton of management for a lot of them. I think there's only like seven that, I, that I'm managing, and then the rest are just like those best ball uh, leagues over on Underdog or over on uh, – um, I guess uh, the the NFC. Okay. All right. Sounds good. That'll wrap it up for another week here. Uh, It all starts on Thursday. That's tomorrow. We're recording on Wednesday. Can't wait for it to all begin. We'll have actual games and players uh, in regular season form to talk about. And we will also talk about injuries next week because players are always getting hurt. Uh, week one early in the season. So keep our fingers crossed that it doesn't affect our teams, but we'll talk all yeah. about it next week. Sounds great. Great. And, uh, and again, if you want to check out Rotowire, go to rotowire.com slash try for that free 10 day trial. And that's uh T R Y T R Y. Yes, sir. Perfect. Easy. Thanks, uh, John. I appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week. Absolutely.